e-bike motor repair is that it yeah so i spoke with michael over at e-bike motor repair he gave me a call and um, he's located in tennessee apparently they're doing a lot of work uh, e-bike work from california they've become specialists i think they started uh, just selling parts then they turn into a service repair shop so i think that's awesome um, that their business is morph like that this is a customer's bike so Basically, uh, symptoms are probably having an intermittent slipping. So trying to get into turbo fast mode, it'll engage sometimes or it won't. Um, it still pedals, so it tells me that the, the belt is still working. The belt's not worn or blown up or broken. It's either working or it's not belts together or it's not type of thing. Um, but that would be neat to get inside these, but it sounds like there's a lot of parts, specialty tools, and, and then that's when you just need that little bit of, you, usually you're learning something for the first time, good chance you might break something, bend something, or you just run into these things where you don't have the specific tools and then the job gets away from you. So this will be sent in and they're gonna do a diagnostic on it. Uh, see what's wrong, um, give a good recommendation, um, a couple routes of planning, and I think it's a pretty good alternative if your warranty is worn out, um, and, or you can't find it, or you never signed up for it, um, you're out of warranty, uh, these guys can take care of you. All right, this is uh, roughly about a 2017 Levo. Got our bolt or hole up here at the down tube. Um, all power buttons over on the left side of the down tube over here. 250 watt motor this motor is going to be we're going to pull it out it's going to be sent in for some service got some slip bearings or something like that that need to be replaced uh, it needs to be inspected fully all right so i haven't done this before so i'm going to get through as much as i can just from basic knowledge and experience and then i'll stop and refer to instructions or another youtube video if need be so right now it's going to take the crank arm off this is pretty normal eight millimeter hex um, so i like to bring the opposite crank arm closest to me horizontal put my tool in as close to horizontal as possible and this should be loosening but it could be opposite thread I just feel like it got tight. Okay. Oh boy. Interesting. We're gonna go counterclockwise. It broke free and then it got tough, which it should do, unless they did something different here. But basically we're self-extracting this crank arm off, so all in one swoop. There it goes. So quite a bit of pressure. Holy mackerel. So there is a lot of resistance, but it's staying consistent. You know, you may be going the wrong way if you can't get a good revolution out of it. It just gets super tough, basically, using almost all your might. This one is definitely coming off harder than your average one, but still moving pretty good. So I feel pretty good about not destroying something. And we should start to see a gap develop. The crank arm is going to start separating from where the chain ring is. There we go. Get a little easier. Just keep the crank arms in the same spot. As this gets easier, I can kind of get a better angle with my tool. This crank arm is ready to come off. There we go. So it has a splined unit here. Could be two, four, six, eight splines. Very specific. This is a Praxis crank arm. I'll just go ahead and dislodge. Actually, would have been a good idea. Let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and downshift. Chain's in the biggest climbing gear back there. We're going to downshift. Get all that tension off the rear derailleur because I'm going to take this chain off the front chain ring. There we go. All right, same idea. So bringing this, let's see, close to me. So I'm gonna stick my tool in here clockwise. I'm gonna go counterclockwise, but so I'm gonna need that crank arm again for leverage. So I'm gonna put this on and it doesn't matter where I'm placing or clocking it, but I'm gonna get a couple revolutions to fasten it. And I took this off a little too early. There, now I have something to grab against. 
If you got sharp pedals, throw a rag on there. These have some nasty cleats on there, or pegs. So, let's see. That's, I'm gonna go counter, so I'm gonna be pushing down. This guy's gonna be tough too. But basically loosening. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a glove on because I don't trust myself with those pegs. So, got a glove for my left hand, protect myself from the sharp pedal. And if your hand slips anywhere, you need to build some hand protection. But just continue counterclockwise. A lot of resistance on this guy. As long as it stays consistent, you're not doing anything wrong. But there we go, got a little looser. All right, so this guy has a lock ring. It's gonna be the silver portion. It's got these little teeth right here. We're actually gonna put a tool in that's gonna to go into those openings right there, and I think I have it. All right, and this guy's pretty huge, so you use a crescent wrench. Crescent wrench has a solid side here. You wanna put all your pressure on this solid piece opposed to the movable jiggly piece. You just don't wanna stress that out. These guys already fit loose to begin with, so we don't want this to be slipping. So I'm gonna be going counter, I'm gonna be going upward. So I'll flip this down here. And then as I'm tightening, I'm kind of jiggling the tool, making sure I got the tightest fit, because I never trust these crescent wrenches or adjustable wrenches. So I'm gonna be going in the upward motion. So we need to make sure the tool stays in and your tool stays on the actual chain ring tool. Okay, that guy's hella tight. I love it when you watch these videos and the guys barely move the tool and it comes loose. They skip all the part how it, you bust a gut trying to open this thing. All right, uh, one of two things, tool slipped off or I broke it free. There we go, broke it free. Had to come in for a second try. So definitely counterclockwise. There's our ring. And then, now this whole chain ring here is still pressed on, so it's gonna need some type of puller. Come in, grab it from the outside, push off of the center, and then extract it. So the socket's a 13 16 You just have to find something similar. It's probably the tightest fit. You can go slightly larger and probably hit another. Looks like some type of spacer that's metal. Probably won't hurt either one. Using something like this something cheap <laughs> okay looks like this guy fits so basically we got a socket just a standard so this is like a 13 16 get that centered there and then these three fingers are going to fit on the inside here and then this center piece is going to drive right in here so we're, we're getting some length and we're also protecting that shaft because if that piece goes in the middle of the shaft it's going to hit the threads which is what we need to put the crank arm back on. And, oh, this is gonna be fun. Just lining this guy up. Already a joy. Yeah, this is already off center. Okay, it's not a perfect tool, but hopefully we don't need to put too much pressure Hopefully it's just, it's ready to go. Some of these things are just, they're tight. Probably more than what your fingers can do. And hopefully everything stays in place. We're gonna go clockwise. Nice, okay, so it didn't take much. Not a lot of pressure, so if it's not totally perfect and center, you're not gonna hurt anything for the most part. Like I said, it's just mostly tight enough to where your fingers can't get it and we need to just apply a little more, more than that. And at this point, we got some plastic covers. We got one, two, three, four visible screws I can see. Got some stuff down here. I'm not sure if at some point we're gonna have to disconnect our, our battery, but we can start with these guys here. So those look like uh, definitely Torx. Okay, so we got a T Torx, it's a T15. So we can use these doohickeys here. 
And you can use uh, the uh, three-way style. Anything green from Park is gonna be Torx, your Torx tools. Boom. I'm doing this every day. I'm probably using a battery-powered helper. Don't need anything too big. All right, so here's where you definitely wanna keep track of everything. Uh, left and right crane car. I'm not sure if that's very specific. Got your chain ring, and this is the plastic cover. This is the drive side. You could mark it. You can throw some tape on it if you can't read it. I'm just gonna put D or DS drive side. We got our lock ring. It's going with our chain ring, and there's our tool. And keep a little bit tidy. It's like doing dishes, rinsing off as you're dirtying them, making food in the kitchen. Bam. Same thing with this side. Just get this assistant crank arm off. Looks like a two piece here, two bolts for the top. There we go, three bolts for the bottom. Then we got a glimpse of this beast here. Got the S, see part of the bros, part of the something else, <laughs> turbo. Um, down there, bros as well. All right, so we're gonna have two wires on this side. You got this guy, there's a black and a red that are together. That's going into one unit. It's going to be right there. So we're going to try and grab on the rubber portion closest to the body of the motor and uh, pull from there rather than pulling on the wires. You don't want to disconnect anything. Second one. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Just two fingers. Got two little prongs on the inside. Tiny little black. Um, it's going to be a marker. It's going to go in a very particular position. Just be gentle when we go back to put those on. Um, let's see. We're going to have another one. Right up here. So it's gonna be this unit. What do we got? Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. Going into one plug right there. This one definitely tricky to get your fingers on. So we're gonna have a plastic clip down at the bottom. Gotta pull that open partially as we pull away. So down on the bottom, just getting my fingernail underneath it, bending it slightly. able to get this guy definitely a hard sucker just one clip on the bottom I was actually able to push it open and it stayed open to clear our little marker here um, you just you gotta have some strong fingertips um, didn't have to get any pliers on it which you're trying to avoid all that stuff right and I kind of did have to pull on the wires so I'm hoping they built this in a good way where it's not gonna fall apart because you do got to apply some pressure not a lot of space to do it <clears throat> looks like there's one more connection here I'm not gonna touch that one yet uh, could just be all part of the unit so we won't touch that one didn't seem to be in the um, the other video all right gonna have a few bolts and so we're gonna have a major bolt here that mounts the motor got one two three i think is all we're gonna have there let's see what size those are top here and then we're going down so we're going clockwise got another one here and then another one whoops way too low another one there so one two three total on this side all right coming out this way just make sure you watch out for your lines got a derailleur here <laughs> Part of the fun when you're doing internal stuff. It looks like you can take the cover roof off if you had to do some internal. Um, if you need to be very careful pulling this out, you don't want to drop it. You got some uh, cardboard, rubber mat, things like that. Go ahead and drag it over. Speaking of which, 
have one sitting right here. Usually I wouldn't do this, but hey, I mentioned it. I don't want to jinx myself. Yeah, good old derailleur lines right in the way. Cool. Uh, we just need to create some slack. Um, I guess a couple ways we can uh, release my shifter here off the bar, pull some slack this way. I can loose my cable back here, but then we're dealing with um, a jacked up cable. We're gonna have to replace that. So if you're trying to minimize your work or minimize nickel and diamond the customer, looks like we got some slack here. Okay, I got some got some way here. Watch your feet. Okay, so we do got one more wire here. This uh, really thin one, two, three, four, and uh, looks like there's no little safety. We just got to pull carefully. There we go. And it looks like there's only one spot for that. So this being the drive side, every slot is, is pretty unique. So I doubt you're gonna have trouble connect, reconnecting these guys. This stays on the right side over here. And we got the bigger guy over on the, and that's kind of mounted with the screw so it's staying in place. This is up top high on the left side. And then we got the tiny guy, singular all by itself. And then here's a nut that I dropped. Other than that, that's it. Just looking at your, your axle, your shaft here as we crank our... Shut up, stop music.